Hey guys, uh, it's me again. I'm uh, here to uh, do some more videos with you on the homework packet from last week. Uh, so I'm going to do eight more problems today. So that'll be a total of ten problems I've done. So it's a whole third of the packet. So you need to be following along the videos and, um, you know, make sure you're kind of understanding the work and, and how these problems are solved. And if you don't uh, understand it, even with the videos, and you got to be asking me in class, come to tutoring, all that stuff I mentioned. So um, anyway, uh, Let's go ahead and dive into the, this first problem. I'm going to do number four from the packet, as you can see. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and start. Uh, it wants to know, the question asks us, when the object passes through x equals 5 meters, what speed does the object have? So when it goes through this spot right here, how fast is the object going? Now, we already know the object's already going some speed. It has a velocity of 12 meters a second, the problem tells us. So what we're going to do is find its initial kinetic energy, ki. Uh, initial kinetic energy, one half m v squared. So initial kinetic energy will be one half its mass, which was six, times the velocity squared, which was twelve, and we're gonna get uh, four hundred and thirty-two joules for the initial energy. Now you might be wondering why am I doing that? Well, because um, well, we're gonna we want to know how fast it's going here, right? So what's happening is someone, someone or something is doing work on this object, right? They're doing work to it. They're adding energy to the system. They're doing work, right? Um, if it's already had that much energy, what we can do is find out well, how much energy was added to the system, and then we can go back to this e kinetic e energy equation, and then um, plug in the new amount of energy, the mass, and then solve for V, all right? So let's see how much work was done. We're going to use the graph, right? Area under the curve of that graph will tell us uh, how much work was done. So there's one rectangle, that's a big rectangle there, actually a big square. This whole thing's make well, sure you only go to the x equals five meters. We don't want to go to the six. Be careful about those little details. So there's one little area there. And then we have uh let's see, got another rectangle here. Alright, and then we got uh, let's go yellow. Maybe triangle here triangle here and triangle there so those are our those are our areas we want to we want to get now see, see this one is one two three four and then up 10 so that's going to be 40 right 40 in there this rectangle is over one up 10 so that's 10 this triangle is over one up 10 or half of that because it's a triangle so base time one half times base times height so half times the base times the height. So that's going to be 5. This is also 5. This is also 5. So we add it all up. That's 20, 60, like 65. So that means the work done was 65 joules. Now we already had 132 joules. So we're going to take 432 joules of kinetic energy plus the 65. Now we have our final kinetic energy, right? The amount of energy at the end. Uh, and that's going to be 497. Uh, joules. So then we're going to go back to our kinetic energy for equation. 497 joules now equals one half the mass, which was six times v squared, because we don't know what the velocity is at that uh, at x equals five meters. But now we have the information that we can figure it out. So we're going to basically uh, divide everything by three, because half of six is three. So 497 divided by three is 165.8. Seven. Oh, let's go ahead and point seven equals v squared. We're going to square both sides to cancel that squared sign, and we're going to get the v equals about twelve point nine meters a second. Right, so there you go, twelve point nine meters a second. So it started off going twelve. We did some work to it. We added energy to the system, and now it's going twelve point nine meters a second. All right, there you go. So um, that's number four. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to do is number eight. Eight. Oh my god, what's going on? Eight, there we go. Um, all right, on this one, um, uh, let's see what we're, what's happening. It's on point A on the ground and point B and C have the different distances there at list. And um, part A wants us asking us uh, how much work must be done by an external agent to move a five kilogram object from rest at point A to rest at point B. So we're just going straight up, right? And the only kind of energy we're changing here is potential energy because it's going. Um, from rest at point A to rest at point B. So they're not moving, right? They're not moving. Um, 
So there's no change in kinetic energy. So the only change, uh, what work is a change in energy. The only kind of energy change happening here is potential. So our work really is just a change in potential energy, gravitational potential. Well, how much did it change? Well, it was zero in the beginning, right? So, because it was on the ground. And then it went up to a height of H, which was 20 meters. Uh, okay, so there you go. So work work is going to be equal to the amount of potential energy change. Um, so it was the mass was 5 times G is 10 times the, the height, which is 20, it says. All right, so work is going to be 5 times 10 times 20, which is going to be 1,000. 1,000 joules. All right. Uh, now, technically, it's the um, amount of final potential energy minus the initial, but because the initial was zero, it's just 1,000 minus zero, right? So it's 1,000 joules. So there you go. Let's go to part B. How much work must be done to move the same object from rest at point A to rest at point C? The answer is 1,000 joules. Now, this one has been troubling students because they think, well, how can it be at the same amount? Look how much further it's going, right? This isn't, isn't L. L is 45 meters. It's going 45 meters, not just 20 meters. Must there be doing, must it, has got to be more work being done on it, right, to go farther? No. Why? Okay. It's at rest at point A and at rest at point C. So we didn't change from it initially to the final point. We did not change the amount of kinetic energy. Now, in the beginning, there was work done to accelerate it, right? To get it going in this direction. But then at the end, there was negative work done to slow it down, to bring it back to rest. So the work done to get it moving and the work done to slow it down cancel out. And the only change in energy is a change in potential energy from the ground up to the top at sea. That's the only thing that we did in in the end, right? In, in between, you know, from point A to, like, to this point, Maybe okay, yeah. Maybe there's more work being done because it's because it's it's moving, right? It has it has kinetic energy there, but at the end we slow it back down. We do negative work to slow it down, and so the amount of work it took to speed it up here at point A, and the amount of work it took to slow it down, negative work to slow it down at point C cancel out, and the only uh, work we've done is a thousand joules to uh, increase its potential energy. So both answers, thousand joules. All right, let's go to number uh, ten. Is the next one I'm going to do. All right, number 10. <clears throat> number 10, uh, let's see if we got a spring. It was constant as 15 newton per meter. Can be stretched up to 10 meters, blah, 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 blah. All right, first part is draw a graph. Okay, draw a graph of force versus stretch for this spring. All right, now we're going to use um, Hooke's law here. F equals negative kx. <clears throat> if this, if uh, k is 50 and x, we're going to plot x. So we're just going to do one meter, two meters. Its maximum is 10 meters, right? So luckily for us, this graph is exactly 10 uh, notches long here, or whatever we call them. 7, 8, 9, 10. And then now what should our scale be? Well, it's, I mean, if every, uh, the, the spring constant is 50, so I'm going to make it 50. Because each little line is going to be 50 going up. He's on this 300. And then 400 up here, and then 500 at the top. Okay. And then, yeah. All right. Now we're going to just plug in the K and plug in X to find F, right? Because uh, we're not, we're more plotting force versus uh, the displacement, basically, right? So we don't, we don't know what, we're not going to plot K, but we know what K is. So if I put in 50 for K, it's a constant, it doesn't change. And I make X a 1, well, then F is 50. Now, technically, it's negative 50, but to make the graph right, we're just going to um, go absolute value here. Okay, so let's just take the absolute value of this guy. So uh, at one meter, it's 50. If you plug in a two for x, f becomes 100. If you plug in a three for x, x is, uh, force is 150. If you plug in a four for x, force becomes 200. Oops, sorry. There we go, missed one. Uh, a five, 250, you see the pattern here, it's, it's linear, it's a straight line all the way up to to there and then we're going to draw a line hopefully yours will be a little straighter than mine ah, even with my fancy pad i can't draw straight lines oh well you get the idea right so it should be a straight line yeah whatever you get the idea straight line going to those points okay part b the spring is set vertically and a, uh, a mass of five kilograms hangs from it what is the stretch of the spring all right now this one we got to think a little more deeply here about this problem 
Um, if we hang a five kilogram mass from it, what's the only thing pulling the mass down is its weight, right? So let's draw, draw a free-body diagram over here, this problem. There's a spring, right, attached to the wall of the ceiling, and we got a five kilogram mass pulling it down. Uh, mg pulling it down, mg is going to be 50 newtons, right? It's mass 5 times 10 uh, is 50 newtons. Well, if the force being applied to the um, spring is 50 newtons, that means the spring force is also 50 newtons, right? So we go back to our Hooke's Law, F equals negative kx, right? Now we know the force here, the force is 50 newtons, okay? Because that's how much weight uh, the spring is pulling down, the, the mass is pulling down on the spring. We know K is uh, is 50, so I'm going to put in a uh, 50 for K. Whoa, whoa, what happened? Let me go back. Sometimes I hit, hit, hit the button by accident. Hit a button, I don't mean to push. All right, negative 50, and then time. We don't know how, how far does it go down, or how far does it stretch. Uh, well, we're going to solve for x. We're going to divide both sides by negative 50. Divide that's by negative 50. And we're going to get x equals negative 1 meters, which is exactly what would happen, right? Negative because it's going down, right? So that's your answer. It's going to go 1 meter down if you put a 5 kilogram mass on it. All right, let's go to part c. If the spring is stretched from 0 to 8 meters, what is the potential energy stored in the spring? All right, for a spring, a spring elastic energy, we have 1 half kx squared is our um, equation for spring energy. And this is just plug and chug, right? We already know x is going to be 8, because that's how far we're stretching it. k is 50, and we're going to solve for uh, potential spring energy. So we just plug in the numbers. 1 half times 50 times 8 squared, and you plug the numbers in, and you get uh, 1,600 joules. Piece of cake. All right. Uh, how much work must be done to stretch the spring from 0 to 3 meters? Show what qu this quantity represents on the graph. All right, so for this part, um, it's the exact same equation we just did, um, except this time instead of uh, 8 for x, we're going to put in a 3 for x. So 1 half times 50 times 3 squared, and we're going to we do the math, and we're going to get uh, 225 joules. Of course, if we were smart, we could have realized that, oh, wait, if it stretches to 3 meters... Isn't the work done, the area under the curve of a force displacement graph? Yes, it is. It also works for a spring. Why wouldn't it? Uh, what's the area under the curve? Well, let's see. 3 over, up 150. It's a triangle, so it's, one, it's half that. So 3 times 150 is 450. Half of, 50, half of 450 is, of course, 225 joules. Um, so either way you do it, you get the right answer. All right, I'm going to stop here. Um, did three problems. I'm going to do another video real quick right after this. I'll post it to YouTube in just a second doing some more problems. So hope this was helpful to you and uh, stay tuned in just a minute for the next set of videos. All right. Take care. See you all Tuesday.